What's up everybody, a spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Reverse Engineers series. And we're going to be taking apart this beauty, which is I forget the name, but it's like an L3 something Mercury. It's in the it's in the title. You guys you guys know me. I'm tired. Um <laughs> So there was actually a little bit of debate going on as to which one I was going to pick this week because um, I actually do have to apologize that I forgot on the inspiration episode to add the poll for a while, so some of the results may have been a little bit skewed. Um, but some of the comments were going more towards the um, the frigate, I believe. I forget the name of it. The, the dire wolf frigate, I think. Um, and it was because it had some more mechanical things like the custom made turrets, the decoy system, things like that. So I'm going to keep that in the back burner, like reservation, if I ever need another build to go back to. Because uh, that did have some really cool features. But for me personally, I made, I didn't really pick any bones about it. I really wanted to, to take this one apart. But then when I actually got the poll going, um, there was quite a few results towards this one overall. So while there was... Uh, quite a few good arguments towards doing the frigate. Ultimately, I think um, the majority vote was for this one anyway. Um, now, this is one of those ships where most of it is cosmetic work and design stuff. There isn't too much in it that functions differently like the frigate. Um, but there is some really, really cool stuff to look at. Uh, for one thing, I'm trying to figure out... So this, this is a large grid, so this must be the small. I don't know how they did that. Okay, there is a gap there, so it's got to be held... Oh, is it all coming off in this? Oh, that's something I didn't see coming. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Is that what's holding it together? Wow! Okay, that's sneaky. I'm trying to get a, a better view so that I can actually make sure that this is what's going on. Okay, interesting. So, I am going to have to dissect this a little bit. Um, so this is actually small grid. This wing area is a small grid setup, which I didn't realize. Um, it's using the armor ramps and the offset trick that we've seen where you do um, one set at one height and then one set a block lower. And I'm guessing they used... Yeah, so this comes up here and then uses the full blocks. This uses the slopes on the edge of the 2x1 corners. Okay, now this is interesting. They used the slope there as a corner type. And then flipped it with the 2x1 ramps. And this uses just the, um, the regular 1x1 corner block. And then goes back to the 2x1. That's actually interesting because like, if you were developing a wing, you could flip this and do it this way. And that's actually a really cool wing design. That works pretty well. Um, I can't say I've ever seen it done this way before with the slope and then corner and then back to the 2x1 corners, though. That's pretty cool. And this uses, what was this, the heavy armor slope trick that we've seen a couple episodes back um, that make a kind of a vent look, which is really neat, really cool. Okay, sorry about that. I had to cut for a second. Uh, but this is another area vent type thing, or, or I don't know if that really would be a vent design. Anyways, it, it's pretty cool though, using the 2x1 inverted corner base and then the ramp base on there. That's pretty cool. Uh, gives it, again, kind of this vent kind of look. I guess that's what it would be, more of a vent style. Um, so yeah. In the interest of science, we're going to cut some of this part. Uh, the other cool part I think was neat was adding these spotlight areas on a rotor, which essentially is kind of, a, uh, gives it kind of a rot. I don't know if it actually had a rotating function in the command, like the, the cockpit thing, uh, but it's pretty cool that you could if you wanted to. It, that may have just been done so they could position them slightly at an angle, I don't know. Um, but let's go ahead and... Okay, that's large? Oh, now that's interesting. Alright, so how... Oh! Okay, we've seen this done before. This is really cool. Um, I'm gonna break 
that and hope it doesn't damage anything too badly. So, it's actually hooked to these lights, I think, by the looks of things. But we have an advanced rotor head part. So, you can use an advanced rotor on the small grid and then do the rotor head and connect it to the large grid, or vice versa, um, type of thing as well. I didn't know you could do that. So that's pretty cool. And that's how they're actually holding this whole wing section together, which is really interesting. And then this is half armor blocks along here that gives it this kind of gap type thing. And I also want to figure out how they did these pods. I guess it's the same way with um, a large grid rotor. Uh, this isn't really a grid size change. This is just to get it to curve. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I've always given on people a lot of credit for being able to do this kind of stuff where you build something with a rotor but then give it just enough space that it can work but um, not enough to where you can visibly notice it and I, I don't really know how people pull that off. Uh, it's something that I've yet to fully grasp, uh, grasp and understand at the same time. Also, by the way, if I'm stammering around a lot, um, I'm actually really, really tired. I don't know what's going on as far as I, I got plenty of sleep, but I just was really tired today when I record this. So um, I was even talking to a friend of mine and I was saying, like, I can't talk today. I'm not, I'm not sure I should be recording because <laughs> I'm stammering and stuttering and mixing my words up. So uh, if you notice that, just ignore me. I actually, uh, believe it or not, I actually did have to cut this section when I when I said I had to cut for a second. It was actually because um, I stammered and mixed up my words and it just came out really, really bad. <laughs> like, I was like, I did not mean to say that. And I was like, ah, screw it, I'm just going to cut that. So, yeah, if I, if I make up new words or something, <laughs> just ignore me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Do I have mirror mode on? Oh, mirror mode is on. Whoops didn't mean to do that. Alright, so yeah, these pods are held in here with um, with the rotors and that allows them to curve. And that this rotor trick though is really, really neat. I've never seen it done reversed that way only maybe one time. So that's pretty cool. I'm wondering though, can you just start with... Um, oh, you can start with a rotor head. That's really interesting. I'm going to have to play around with that a little bit. Um, also, you can ignore this stuff. I had mods listed in this um, world file for a different reverse engineer episode, and I just never removed the mods, but this is a vanilla build. Um, I also like this touch. This is kind of cool. Using the um, conveyor sorter thing as kind of like a landing strip arrow type thing. It's kind of what it looks like anyway, kind of like running lights. Or not running lights, but landing landing strip lights type thing. I don't know. Um, I like this too. This is pretty cool. This frame thing around here. I'm actually curious how this got sealed. Because I always have a problem blending in glass with the, the frames like this. So we've got Okay, so this is kind of moving along the edge, and then this overlaps slightly, which still keeps the airtight, preserved area. That's cool. Then this is a... Oh, this is a half block, which means they probably have a half block on that side. Huh. That I didn't expect. So yeah, this is kind of another one of those invert the ramps. Use the half blocks with the nose of the 2x1 bases, and then the base to a half block there regular slope there and then back to the two by one ramps flipped back to back and then you're back to the ramps going this way so that's pretty cool and then on this section they did kind of the same thing that we just showed that's the same block uh, height and then let's see is this is yeah light armor block and then using the uh, ramps flipped to the half block that works pretty well we've got the um, two by one tips and then the lights behind them which gives it kind of a, a cool thruster kind of look to it. I like that. Um, I think that's about all the interesting points I wanted to point out for the 
exterior. The rest of it is stuff that we've seen before, like, you know, this kind of shape and things like that. That's fairly self-explanatory. Um, this is kind of cool, though, because this is yet another small grid thing. Which looks like... Oh, wait, that's a thruster. Okay, so the thrusters are on the large grid. That's really cool that they actually did such a close frame around all of the large grid stuff. Or is... I think the conveyor... There it is. Got it. Okay, so the conveyor is part of the small grid. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up just to get a better picture. Okay. Oh. I said okay, but it won't let me in. So there's the connector. We've got a couple spacers here, and then a conveyor block, and then the um, same trick that we saw earlier. So we've got the rotor head here, and then the small advanced rotor uh, going out that way. And then basically they've built it out, and then down and around. That's really slick. I really like how that blends together, and unless you knew what you were looking for, it's really hard to pick up on. That's really, really cool. Um, one thing I wanted to do real quick is I actually want to see how this, how you would set this up kind of thing. Um, so we've got the rotor head, so you'd attach that. And then if we switch this to a small... I don't think we can just snap this in, so I'm trying to figure out... Or, hold on, is it that the small one... No, that won't work, I don't think. Oh, it kind of does. That's... Wait a minute. Are they not using a large? No, that's a large. Okay, I'm going to tinker with this for a minute because i got to figure out how they're doing this. Okay, so I'm definitely going to have to look further into this. I've been playing around with it for a while, and everything that I'm seeing always comes back to basically having a large base and a smaller uh, rotor head. And I believe you can even do that when you place a... I don't know about the advance now that I think about it. Um, but if we get rid of this, I don't know if there's a control panel or not. Uh, let's just... Does this one have one? Let's just grab one. Um, I'll probably end up doing like a whole video on this if I... Because I can't actually find like an updated version of this. Oh gosh. Um, there we go. So you can add a rotor header at a small one. So, that works, but doing it this way where you have the small grid base with the larger head, I've not been able to figure out how to do that with the exception of there's a workshop file that already has this set up. Um, and then you would basically just paste it in as a blueprint and connect the grids together. That makes sense, but as far as how that was made in the first place, I'm not really sure. So I'll, I'll look into that further. Uh, but I was kind of spending a lot of time on that, and I'm, I'm like, I don't really have that much time to uh, to do off-camera stuff. So that's really cool, and it's used a lot through this build. So at the moment, I'm going to operate on the assumption that it was done with the blueprint way of doing it, uh, where they just paste in a already done um, larger base, or, I mean, a smaller base with the large grid. The other exception to that would be if this was a normal rotor and then you go into like SE Toolbox and change the base or something like that, but that's a, a, a bit more um, finiggly than trying to just do something like uh, using a larger um, rotor head. And technically I don't really know that it would serve any other purpose really. I know that this is an advanced one which has a conveyor port on it. Um, I don't really think that's being used here. So, I don't really know if there's any advantage to having the larger base, I mean the small base, or rather if you had a larger one. I don't really know if that would affect it as much, although it does look like you can get a closer gap where the base in and of itself would take up this whole square. So there are some advantages to that. 
uh, but I'll have to look into that further. I also really, really like this. I'm gonna have to uh, do some quick dissection here, actually. Let's get rid of that, and that, and that. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how this was done. It looks like just a standard piston, actually. So there's the piston. Yeah, so it's basically just a piston. Though how they did that without it breaking, I don't know, because I thought you had to surround pistons with the, um... Oops, I messed something up. Oh, now that's interesting. That messed it up somehow. Oh. Okay, because this is using the same kind of trick. I'll have to play around with that. I'm wondering how this doesn't break, though. I thought you had to surround pistons with blast door blocks so they didn't scrape and get damaged unless the damage block just or the block damage has to be turned off maybe I don't know let me uh let me reload this so that we can get back in here all right I'll be the first to admit it I'm genuinely confused now um I gotta try one thing okay so I'd like to point something out this doesn't go anywhere Okay, I'm smacking into this. Nothing. Doesn't go anywhere. This, however, I reloaded the game. Haven't, uh, haven't deleted anything, but watch this. Right? So, if I come over here, and I land on this, it kind of moves, but then if I hit the button... Okay, now I definitely broke something. I don't know how this happened. I, it, it worked before when I did my inspiration episode, but watch this. Boink! And it completely disconnects itself. I don't know what happened. Okay, so now super confused. Not sure how this works. I deleted the whole ship, repasted the, um, the blueprint back in. Now this elevator doesn't go anywhere. So, I don't know how this works, but it's some kind of black magic, basically. Um, not sure how else to describe it, but I am kind of curious how this doesn't get damaged. Because I realize this has the blast door block around it, but above that, it's still considered a large grid with the piston. And I always thought without the blast door blocks that the pistons would damage it. Anyways spending an awful lot of time on this episode dissecting a couple of those things. I probably will end up making a whole video at some point on hypergridding and stuff like that once I figure out a little bit more about how it's done, because I really haven't seen a lot of videos on it. There's a lot of Reddit posts or Steam workshop uh, guides and stuff like that. Um, but I haven't seen a lot of videos that discuss it. If you find one, let me know, but I've had a couple of people that mentioned they'd be interested in seeing a full video on that kind of stuff and some of those like hackier kinds of ways of doing things. Um, now we get into a bit more of the meat and potatoes of this ship, and the reason I liked it so much was a lot of the little detail decorum stuff. Again, most of this is done on a small grid, and, and if you are if you know what you're looking for, you can kind of see the seams here. Um, you guys have probably seen enough of these reverse engineer episodes to pick it out. Uh, for example, right here, all of this. So everything past this door is basically going to be a large grid exterior frame with the small grid interior. Now, where they actually ended up putting the rotor would be interesting to figure out. Did anyone else see something fly by on my... Oh, there it is. It's my hand. <laughs> Don't mind me. I just work here. Uh, <laughs> I said I'm tired. Leave me alone. Um, that does not just extend to my dialogue. It also extends to my wits. Um, yeah, I don't actually notice where the connecting rotor is. It's probably under here somewhere, maybe? Or up here. Maybe up on this section somewhere, or towards the edge over there, maybe? Um, it's hard to tell because there's actually a lot of glass, and there wouldn't be that many places to hide it, so I'm kind of... my money is actually on the bottom section. It's probably under here somewhere. Uh, but this is really well done, but this is also using half blocks on the small grid. Which, the, okay, now that I realize what they're doing, this is actually a really, really cool setup. And I'm gonna explain why... Piston elevator by deleting this. 
and I'm going to show you why this is so cool if you haven't already figured it out. So, based on the location of this grid, right, um, you can see that you can't really fit another block over here. Actually, yeah, like that. It won't quite go, right? It's, it's there, but it's not enough and much in the same way this is. Like, if I place this here, even though it's giving me a green, uh, it, would make the, it would make it stutter and wobble like this because it's trying to resolve the collision detection between the small and the large grid. But by using a half block, although the collision would be in the same place as the, the full block, the actual block isn't. And so you can place that and Again, even though it's using the same collision boxes in that you can see it's a full block on the green square, once you actually paste it, there's actually no physical collision happening, and so it doesn't have anything it needs to resolve. I actually wonder if I could do that over here, although it was giving me a red grid. And that's probably because of the glass. This, this one's collision box stops here. The glass one is going to be, like, way out here. Actually, I'm kind of surprised they were able to pull this off. But so that's a really cool trick if you're if you're looking at it going, well, I've kind of got some more space here, but I can't quite fit a full block in there. So that's really clever. It added it allowed them to get much more snug to the wall um, before having to, you know, stop. So we've got stuff like this. Um, this is a little just uh, a little bit more just decoration kind of thing not really too fancy with that but I will say the half blocks on the small grid adds even more detail than just doing a small grid interior too I mean now you've got these tiny little curves rather than have one that comes way out or something like that um, so that's really really cool for the couch and I also like the floor this is an interesting thing with the floor that they're doing the blast door blocks um, like here and here for walkways kind of thing and then regular light block for the rest of the flooring it, It's kind of like almost like area rugs kind of thing or tile um, So that's a pretty cool little trick uh, For the couch. This is actually a really good couch. I like this. Uh, so again, it's using mixes of two by one Ramps we've got the base and the tip there and then the corner and it goes around with an inverted and then we come up with a full ramp This one they swapped it out for a light uh, and then a straight block with the base going around with inverted going this way and then a couple little half sla uh, half slopes for the headrest. So that's pretty cool and it's fairly well proportioned and everything. It kind of looks like a seat and it's all leaning back so that's kind of neat. Same with this. We've got the half slopes on the top with the bases um, plus the sound blocks for speakers and then you go out one and then come back in um, so yeah, that's a pretty cool way to add a little bit of texture and detail. I love this bedroom area. We've got the same kind of couch going with the exception of the 2x1 tips in the corner. Uh, I like this too. It's basically a... oh, it's a wheel. I thought it was a spotlight, but a wheel 1x1 one one with a text panel uh, for a little coffee table, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is a pretty neat desk too. It's using the base and slope ramps, or um, the base and tips of the two by one in different various ways and this looks like half blocks they're really making use of half blocks here in some cool ways and again they're still fairly new to me so I don't think about some of this stuff and how they're doing it but this works really really well um, the chair is a pretty cool idea too it's it's basically the rounded block with a tip from the two by one down on the bottom to give it kind of this angle but also a curve um, headrest is neat. I really like that setup. And the feet are actually the base with the lights. That's pretty cool. The bed's really, really neat. I like this. It's actually using the 2x1 ramps in the vertical state to add a slight angle, but not a real um, shallow one. It's actually a, a really sharp angle so that it, it's more vertical. And I think that's perfect. It's one of the best looking beds I've ever seen done in vanilla. In, in in all honesty. Um, yeah, I really like this. This is really cool. And of course, you gotta love a rotating flat screen. That's pretty cool. I do like that. Um, and that's fairly s straightforward. We've seen stuff like this before. Um, you've got the button here, the programmable block stuff. I don't know if this does anything, but if it does, it's a clever way to hide it. 
Um, and then you got a rotor connected to the rest of the upper area here. Which is pretty cool. I like it. I, I do like this too. They've got this kind of like archway frame going on and then just this square modern uh, heavy or um, blast door block kind of look to it. Which is really neat. And again, this is fairly just alternating corners and um, inverted corners to make the archway. Stairs are really well done. I really like this. I love these gaps kind of thing. That's I always have trouble figuring out the spacing to do the gaps correctly, uh, but this is actually just the one by one slopes, it looks like, alternating. And then the blast door edges for the stairs. Now this one was fairly clever. I did not actually know you could do this. Um, all this really is is pistons that are put into the wall and then they just remove the rotor or the post, uh, the piston heads. See, I can't talk today. Um, that's actually super clever because then when it gets over here, um, it doesn't look so much like there's some kind of seal or gasket kind of thing. It makes it look more like a, a door or a shutter kind of thing. So I really like that effect. That's really cool. Um, some of this is kind of really neat in an on the nose type of sense as far as using like a thruster for the, the toilet kind of makes it have a bowl shape or the air vent for the shower to make it look more like a drain. Stuff of that, stuff like that's not really that like difficult or anything, but it's very creative and pretty cool. I like it. Um, as well as like the sink area here, just using different ramps and stuff like that. I would I would go into more detail explaining some of this, but I think we've noted how some of the different patterns work in previous episodes. So I feel like you guys can probably look at them and because I'm actually taking time to stare at them, you're probably able to figure out, you know, how they're using each block and how it's working. So I'm I'm not quite going through and explaining every little placement as I as I did when I first started the series because we've seen a lot of these half block two by one ramps and the corners and stuff like that how they've been used in very creative ways um, and I've noted them multiple times so it just seems like it makes sense to kind of um, do that less and just kind of point them out and make a note of them and draw attention to them so then you guys can kind of see it yourself um, now this is an interesting one too, and I say that because in the comments section someone mentioned this being a hypergrid cockpit, and I didn't think it was, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think you can have a flight seat, or control station as they're calling them now, on a small ship. Yeah, large ship control stations are not available, and you can see that in the little corner tooltip. I just wanted to make sure it was accurate for both of them. So there, the the comment wasn't wrong that because this flight seat is there, that's definitely a hypergrid, um, and I did not notice that before. So that's kind of interesting. The rest of it looks fairly straightforward as far as a small ship. I don't see any other things other than the flight seat that would make it a, a hypergrid. Um, and I don't really even know if it's 100% necessary or not. Um, I think it's this part right in here where my welder's pointing, that this wedge area is where the rotors are connected, which brings the screens really close when you get in um, to the flight seat. How did I get in here before? I didn't have a problem with this when I actually loaded up the ship last time. Oh, there it is. Um, so because they're so close, it makes them really easy to read, but I think the reason they're so close is because they did do the hypergrid and wedged it in here. What I meant by not necessarily needing it, um, is that, not that you can have these on small ships, but you could have put, um, maybe like some slopes or edges and rounded off an area right here and then just had this been a large block, like from the rest of the frame underneath and you still could have gotten away with a flight seat in a large ship. I've seen it done multiple times. Um, but the screens would have, everything would have been a little bit further around it. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't have had this tight knit um, shape to it. The spacing would have been a bit wider to account for the large grid collision box. Um, 
So it improves the design overall, but if you were just like, I'm completely opposed to the hypergrid thing because it's, you know, it's not part of the vanilla game or something like that, you could still do something similar to this and it wouldn't have been 100% necessary is, is, I guess, my point. Um, but yes, it, it is definitely some form of hypergrid. Uh, this is pretty cool too. I like um, all the different little... This is one reason I really, really enjoy small ship grid bridges or cockpits because you can just add all these little programmable blocks to give it like screens and text panels and LCD panel. Like there's just a lot more detail that you can do with it. With a large grid, it's like each one of these screens would just take up a full block. And it's, you can still have just the amount of information on the big screens, but it doesn't look as cool. It's not like some kind of mainframe computer thing. Um, I'm not really sure, this has got to just be for aesthetics, and I'm not really sure what it was going for, but it looks cool. It had some detail to it, but all these are just spotlights. Um, and then this was the area we were talked about before from looking in the window of uh around the edge there and that's what i was meaning is there's the large grid so i'm sure right underneath here is a large block somewhere that you could have tied this in but you know whatever floats your boat uh so yeah overall i'm that's this is still one of my one of my new favorites in terms of interior decoration if you were looking for ways to um inspirations for redecorating your interior of your ship or something i highly recommend this ship for a starting point, just for techniques and different ways you can do it. Um, and I will point out that while this is a hypergrid, I don't think anything else in here really is. Nothing stood out to me as not being doable. Um, I am a little surprised that this could be done, but I guess it could be done anyway. Like, it just let me do it without any, doing anything special. Um, and I'm not really sure why it draws the line there when you could fit a half block there, but the collision box for that window is way out here past this. So that's a little bit odd, but I'm chalking that up to a bit more of um, Space Engineer's quirkiness rather than it being some kind of finagly stuff. The only other part is the rotors. This, the advanced small rotor bases with the large rotor heads. I'm still not quite sure how to pull that one off yet without doing something black magic-y, tomfoolery kind of thing. Um, but if it's true that you can use the blueprint things, then that's probably once you've made a blueprint like that, you could just paste it in. Um, and honestly, that's probably what was done. It was probably somebody put a small rotor in the world, saved it, went into SE Toolbox, changed the rotor head to a small one, or vice versa, changed the, the base to a small one. Um, and left the rotor head large, saved that as a, then came back into the game, saved it as a blueprint, and probably just pasted that. That's probably how it's done. It's how I would try and tackle it. Um, but let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a video on tutorials on, like, how to do that kind of stuff, or how to start a hypergrid or something like that. Do note, it's not really modding, and it's not really vanilla. It involves more of, like, um save game editing type thing with SE toolboxes and things like that as far as I'm aware. Again, I have to do some research on it, but if you guys are interested in a video like that, um, if you're having trouble finding a good tutorial on how to do it but would like to, uh, then let me know because I'm strongly considering doing one and I may do one on hypergrids and then if I can figure out how to do the rotor trick, I might do one for that as well. But with that said, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode and this uh, this part for reverse engineers. Um, so yeah, we're gonna wrap things up here. I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.